Hi, my name is Sarah Bedford. I'm 24, and I'm completing my basics so I can apply for nursing school. I decided to do my project on Rebecca Felton. She was born in June 10th in 1835 on her family's plantation in DeKalb County. She grew up on, her family was a plantation planners. She was the oldest of the, her four siblings, and she was particularly close to her father. When she was older, she was sent to Madison to attend the female college there so she could get an education, which was rare for females those days. And that's where she, she met and married the graduating speaker, Dr. William Felton. He was a man of many hats. He was a medical doctor, a minister, a planner, a politician. He even at one point became a surgeon during the Civil War. Rebecca was used to the to the life of a plantation mistress. She fell into the role because that's what her family did and her grandmother and you know so on and so forth and she expected her daughters to take on the role as well. That's just how she thought of females like that's what they were supposed to do and she understood that the man was supposed to work hard and take care of the family however later in life she learned that men overshadowed overshadowed the women but the man could not succeed without them if the woman didn't tend to everything else behind the scenes then the man would be nothing. She even wrote, the wife and mother were like plants in the deep forest. Their softness and dependence were de- derived from the shade. A woman's home was the center as well, and as well as the circumference of her efforts for the civilization, civilization of humanity. Rebecca Felton and her husband had a plantation and that's what they did. They were had their own plantation, and then later in the war, it had got destroyed, and so he went back to work at, as a planner, and then uh, they saved up enough money, and they opened up a school together. And then from there they went and owned a newspaper where Rebecca Felton wrote most of the articles. She was also one of her husband's, you know, main main campaign runners. They she was an advocate for the prison reform, you know, school modernization, women's suffrage rights. She was a huge promoter of the equal pay equal rights, equal pay. She she was a white supremacist, which in her eyes was, she believed that the white woman was, had to look out for themselves. They couldn't be worried about uh, what the, you know, what coloreds were getting treated like. She believed that they had their own, um, had their own problems, which they did. It just wasn't what she said it was. Her and her husband owned many slaves, and you know she spoke in favor of lynching. If your slave tried to run away, it was okay to hang them from a tree. However, she, I chose her because she was a huge step for women's rights. She was the first woman senator, even though she was only it for a day, and it was kind of like, here you go. Basically, Tomic Hardwick at the time, or was a governor at the time, didn't want to give an opportunity to another opponent, and after Watson's death, they would have had an upper hand so to appease that they to appease the newly franchised women's voters at the time because this was 
a time when women's rights was just becoming a thing, he appointed 87-year-old Re- Rebecca Felton, who was also, that also made her the oldest uh, freshman senator at the time. This and that was just a huge, huge achievement in women's eyes. It set the groundwork for many things to come.